to today's Social Media Masterclass. Uh, my name is Renee Tompkins. I'm the Director of Social Media Marketing at Leia Realty. Uh, looking forward to an amazing session with you today. Uh, let's begin. Let's see here. All right. The agenda for today is we're going to go over uh, some top social media strategies. These strategies are the, the agents who are killing it on social media, so to speak. So uh, definitely noteworthy content there. And then getting more agent referrals in your business. Uh, we'll talk about that as well as how to engage with anybody, how to talk and engage with anybody. I think um, that's a skill some of us have uh, forgotten, especially on social media. So we'll go over that. Um, I'm also going to get into some of the top Instagram hacks for you, as well as some story suggestions on how to maximize engagement. If you see, there's a, a commonality going on here today uh, in the session today. It's engagement. That's the key to success on social media. Um, as well as we're going to get into our, our standard content is mindsets for success, recommended reading. Uh, as you all know, I'm a bibliophile, so I will always recommend a good book for you. I do have some kudos this month as well, and we'll leave some uh, time for Q&A at the end of the, of the session. So as always, uh, our expectations for the masterclass, I ask that you maintain a growth mindset and be open to making results-based changes in your business. None of this stuff matters if it, there's no takeaways for you. Uh, and that said, we want you to take notes and interact by asking questions and sharing, as well as challenging yourself to develop your own social media success strategy. Some of the ideas and suggestions that I pose to you in this class may not uh, work for you, and that's okay. Uh, but let's, you know, let's challenge ourselves to develop a strategy that does. All right. So something to think about, um, and this is inspired by Richard Branson, is um, some entrepreneurs think, how can I make a lot of money? Uh, but the better way to think is, how can I make people's lives a lot better? And if you get it right, the money will come. And this is so true. It's always goes down to coming from contribution, being of service and value to others. Um, so I love that quote. So get get your pens out in your notebooks or your, uh, your phones out, because uh, I'm going to go over some of the top social media strategies that the rock stars of real estate are following. Uh, I take a sip of my tea. All right. Strategy one is, and we talked about this in last month's uh, social media class, uh, but a great refresher or new info for those of you that um, weren't on the weren't on the call last month is to create an effective bio. And one of the things I talked about last month was one of the biggest mistakes that agents make, and I was one of them. Um, you know, was thinking the bio is about you. Um, and yes, although some of it certainly should be, uh, it really should. The focus of the bio should be about who's reading it. So some things to keep in mind when crafting your bio is to make it skimmable, so easily to easy to read, and define your audience. So uh, mention that you are, uh, you know, in service of buyers, sellers, investors, uh, and then outline the authority. The WIFM is what I call it, which stands for what's in it for me. So what's in it for that person to even follow you, uh, and then mention a unique attribute as well as close with a CTA, which is your call to action, which is an invitation to reach out. If any of you need help crafting a bio, uh, you can do it because, again, I know Instagram has that 150 character limit. You can certainly do it by using the chat GPT um, if you are uh, familiar with that. But also, I would invite you to just go to my page at um, on Instagram. It's under at the real Renee Tompkins. And uh, I have done all of that. So you certainly are welcome to take uh, check it out and take from it what you will and craft your own unique bio. All right, strategy number two is incorporate hyper-local content. Hyper-local meaning uh, within close proximity to your office uh, or the place that you're doing business with, the farm that you've already established and why do this. Well, the thought behind the hyper-local content in correlation to the office is that your office already has done the hard work for you. They've got that brand name recognition already out there. So building, you know, building your own, um, your own name brand, so to speak, within that hyper-local area, again, keeping in mind half the work has already been done for you. So and then here's some hyper-local content suggestions. 
Um, and these are, again, focused on a hyper-local segment of your community, whether it be a subdivision, um, you know, just a, 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 a section of town. Uh, but anyway, what you love about that area, uh, what $550,000 will get you in the area or a specific price point that's appropriate to that um, hyper-local area. Uh, local property previews. This is amazing opportunity for agents, especially new agents who don't have their own listings. Uh, if you're going on a broker tour, uh, if, watch for broker tours in your area. Um, they could be sponsored by the board or they could just be independent um, broker tours that are advertised in your MLS. Um, or you could be booking a property preview. Obviously, if you're doing uh, recording anything, you want to have the permission of the listing agent slash seller to do that. I really don't know many that would decline the opportunity to help get the property sold. So take advantage of these uh, listings that are out there. And with, again, the permission of, of the list agent slash seller, get out there and start uh, recording local property previews and posting them on social media. Great way a great opportunity um, to, to build your business and get great content out there. Also, how the, how's this? A tour of your office. This gives people a behind the scenes, which is my next thing of um, the space, but also uh, behind the scenes of a team meeting or office meeting as well. So I think these are some great content suggestions for your hyper-local uh, content initiative. And then also my pro tips on this would be to use hashtags. Uh, all, and then edit your alt text, as well as check in uh, to the office, uh, check into the location as well, and then tag other local businesses if you are uh, showcasing a local restaurant or spa that's really close to your office uh, as well. So you can tag them to the post as well and ask them to share also. Uh, another strategy is to incorporate engaging DMs, direct messages into your social media strategy. So instead of, you know, again, yes, we definitely want you reacting and commenting to posts um, because this is really the equivalent to somebody beginning a conversation with you. But after the initial response to their comments, so say you have a social media post and somebody comments uh, with a question or comment and you respond to the thread, uh, you know, with an answer or comment uh, in return, then I would take that a step further and continue the conversation by direct message because this will deepen the connection. Um, equate it to somebody calling you on the phone, asking you a question and you just answer it and hang up, right? I mean, you would continue that conversation. You would, you would deepen the conversation by continuing the thread of conversation. So uh, another effective way to do that is by DM. Um, again, and, and well, I've said this in past classes, and this is so true. If, if we treated social media more like a telephone instead of a television, I mean, everyone would be gangbusters on, on social media. But I think a lot of us treat social media as a television, and we we just take a lot of it in, right? Instead of pouring ourselves into it and making it more like an interactive, engaging experience. So something to think about. Strategy four, become that conversation starter. Don't wait for people to respond and react to your posts. Yes, you will get some of that. But also another thing, another mindset thing that I would say is don't judge a post success by the amount of reactions or comments that you get. Everything you do, everything you put out is a contribution to your business. So don't be so results-based per se. Be more journey loving. I love that. All right. Um, so again, you're going to go asking questions to in increase engagement. So you can do that by incorporating opinion posts, polls, questions. Recommendations needed is a huge one. You can certainly... Uh, you know, I just had clients move to uh, wherever, um, Falmouth, where, uh, what's the number one place to get fried clams in Falmouth, or, you know, something like that. These posts increase your engagement, and they get you the answers you're seeking. So, and then also seek feedback. Uh, one of the things that I do, and I always uh, get a ton of responses from is I will look for a, a 
photo to post of a living room or a kitchen, something to do with a house and something about it I know is going to elicit a lot of conversations. Like I'll purposely pick something like with dark green, hunter green cabinets, but the rest of the kitchen is doesn't vibe with the cabinets or something. So again, I'm looking strategically for pieces that will incite a lot of comments. Uh, and once I receive comments, I go back and I respond and or comment to each of those people, which will keep that post being seen. Because again, it's really the engagement that is getting your posts in front of people. Yes, the content is important, but it's the engagement that's getting it repeatedly seen. So something to think about. All right, number five is intentionally um, visit people's pages and check in with them using direct messages. And here's something that I highly recommend um, doing is to put the tools of the trade to work for you. You have an amazing, if you're with Layer, you have an amazing CRM. Uh, I always so say any CRM you're using is the right one to use because as long as you're using it, perfect. Uh, but put your contacts in your CRM. Build a list, a social media list, or whatever you want to call it, and start double dutying, if you will, double doubling down uh, using these tools so that, number one, you can set reminders when somebody has had a life event happening. You're going to find out about it on social, but add that into your CRM. Uh, if it's an anniversary, a house anniversary, uh, a wedding anniversary, um, anything, um, a sobriety anniversary, you know, anything that's life changing to someone, add that into your CRM and remember to reach out, send them a handwritten note or, a, um, you know, any kind of a memento of that you're thinking of them, whether it just be a, you know, it be a DM on social media or it be a handwritten note, but make a point to, as I said, build these contacts in your CRM so that you're, you know, these things are coming up. And you don't necessarily always feel like you are spending a ton of time on social media. You can certainly still remember so-and-so's birthday. It's in your CRM. Send a card. All right. And then strategy six is incorporating video messages. I just had lunch um, a, a bit ago with a woman, an agent out here, and she was wonderful. And we enjoyed our time together. And I, about two hours after our luncheon, I received a video text messaging from text message or a video message rather, excuse me, from her letting me know how much she enjoyed her time with me. And I thought, wow, that is just amazing. Uh, something simple. It didn't cost her anything, but it wowed me. Right. And if you've ever received a video message uh, for your birthday, right. Think years back on, on, you know, uh, you may have gotten a ton of posts on social media. You may have gotten text messages, cards, et cetera. But it's the video messages that usually get remembered, right? Because they're more heartfelt and genuine. And somebody took the time out of their day to record that message and send it to you. So uh, just a tip here is to start incorporating video messaging. And you can send them by DM uh, or text. You know, I'm just saying this is a this is a great strategy. Another one is to be very active in local Facebook groups. I mean, a lot of us talk about, and I had a whole segment on a, a previous masterclass about how to network on social media. You know, some of us are uh, big networkers and love the chamber events and all of that. But there's a lot of agents at those events, right? If, if your target group is buyers, sellers, investors, builders, et cetera, whatever, um, become very active in local Facebook groups um, and then work to engage with people in those groups. I think a lot of us belong to groups and again, we're treating it like a television versus a, a telephone. So you can comment on uh, posts in these groups. You can recommend and tag local professionals, um, share news and insights in these groups. Again, you got to obey the group rules and watch what those are, but Overall, you know, start conversations, seek recommendations and ask opinions within these groups. Um, look to see, you know, where people are commenting from in these groups. They'll often give their company name, um, even sometimes a street name, depending on the type of group. So um, definitely 
be very active in local groups because it's a way to network with the locals. It's where the locals are hanging out. All right, let's get into um, some common strategic mistakes um, that agents make on social. Um, one is forgetting your target audience. This is a big one. This is a huge, huge one. Um, we get very agent centric with our marketing and videos. Um, you know, we're connected with a lot of agents and we should be. I mean, these people uh, will help us build our business, will be a great resource um, for us. But I'm talking about, I'm really getting, getting real with who our target audience wants to be. Uh, and I would say for most agents, we do want to connect with clients. We're looking for actual clients uh, to build our business. So that would be buyers, sellers, investors, builders, et cetera. Um, so watch the, uh, watch the agents, agent centric content out there. Um, you know, talking agent lingo without explaining it. You know, just because potential clients don't comment or react on our posts don't mean that they're not watching. And I know most of the comments um, and reactions tend to be from other agents, right? Uh, but again, in that, which could take us off track in remembering. So I, I get why it, why it happens. Uh, we just need to, again, be very focused on remembering who our target audience actually is. Another thing that I do see sometimes on social is uh, agents complaining about the job. Um, and, you know, unless it's a heartfelt, authentic story about, you know, how tough a transaction was, that's not complaining about the job. That's, that's being real about the job. I mean, there's nothing that that's, that's actually valuable content. I'm talking about people complaining about clients, uh, maybe sharing some uh, inappropriate content on social. Uh, here's what I would say. Ask yourself this one question before posting anything that you might feel is, you know, iffy. Would you show this in front of an, a potential client, right? Would you show this at a, to a buyer at the end of a buyer consult? Would you show this to a seller at the end of a seller consult? If the answer is yes, then okay. If the answer is no, you probably don't want to be sharing it on social media. Another um, Another um, sort of thing, a mistake, so to speak, is I see agents doing videos. And honestly, I, I love the videos. So keep doing the videos. I love the videos. But let's end, remember to end the video with a call to action. That's so important because really, ultimately, without incorporating a CTA, your call to action, people might get the impression that you're naturally not taking on new clients, that you are recording content and providing it to be a good resource online. You just never know is what I'm saying. Don't, um, don't make any assumptions, you know, just because you, you might think, well, of course I'm in business. I'm on a social media page. Again, spell it out for people. I would definitely include calls to actions as well as an intro uh, to all of your videos especially if you want the videos to be shared. So if you're asking people to share the content, somebody may be watching it that has no knowledge of who you are. So always introduce yourself at the beginning and end with a CTA, a call to action. Um, and actually every post, every real estate related post should include a CTA whenever it's appropriate. And let's face it, it usually is. And that's why I include that already for you in your layer weekly social media posts. So any post that's appropriate that would include a call to action. And let's, like I said, let's face it, about 90% of them do. Then that stuff's already done for you at Layer as part of your weekly content. But I would challenge you to start including that in your video content and your own posts that you're making as well. And when you're recording videos, absolutely get that call to action at the end. But how about incorporating it whenever appropriate, you know, in the middle as well too. Um, the more people hear it, the more welcome they will feel to reach out to you. And then not connecting with clients, uh, new clients on social media. So here's a cool idea. Um, you're doing a, a buyer consultation. 
and you have, you know, your checklist of stuff to go over with um, people when you're meeting with them, definitely include an invitation on social media towards the end of that consult. But here's another pro tip for you. If you are doing a dynamic buyer consult, I would hope that you have some um, slideshow, a presentation. And perhaps you have a pre-recorded um, home inspector, a, you know, a video from a home inspector that you use commonly, just providing some tips and a, just a quick overview of what to expect as a result of having a home inspection with some, you know, you're in great hands with Renee from Lair, uh, looking forward to seeing you at your home inspection. And so these are some dynamic tips that you can incorporate as, as a part of your buyer consults. But at the end, anyway, if you're using a slideshow presentation, have a slide with all of the social networks that you're on with your social network handles. Um, and then don't wait until closing to connect. Really, don't do that. Because I feel like if you are using social media to connect with people, to build your business, the minute you're in front of them is an opportunity to connect. Um, and ask them if it's okay. You know, some people are very, you know, I will say some people are funny about doing that and, and that's okay, but that's not going to be the majority of the people. The majority of the people on social are there to connect. Uh, so connect with them and um, I would connect with them right at the end of the consult or ask, obviously, if it's okay to send an invite uh, and you initiate that and just say, sure, what's your handle? And then do it right then and there. Um, this will deepen the connection and definitely the trust, right? So it gives them another level as to who you are. And remember, we've talked about this also in past classes. If you are connecting with clients on your social media, go through your old photos and make sure that anything inappropriate is deleted or completely private. So you don't want, you know, you've got to take the time to do that is what I'm saying. So. All right, here's another one, is failing to connect with open house attendees on social media. Open houses are gold in my opinion. This is an opportunity for you to connect with people who are coming out of their houses, uh, they're, you know, uh, they're making time in their schedule, let's say, to come and see this property for whatever reason. So not only do you want another pro tip, I'll say off the side of this, is if you're hosting an open house, Make sure you have as many people walking through that door as possible. So look look for a time frame. Give me like at least a three or four day advance notice so I can get mail out or make phone calls or door knock, advertise on social, whatever I need to do to get as many people through that house as possible. Um, anyway, now you're hosting the open house. You want to create a laminated uh piece of paper that's got all of your social, let's connect on social with the, um, you know, a scannable QR code for each channel, um, making it making it easy for people to connect with you. Um, you could do this even with a framed picture, a digital sign, et cetera. But again, you want to connect again, is every time, even on the back of your business cards, you want to have either a QR code or at least your, your, um, your social, uh, handles on the back of your uh, business card as well too. So every opportunity to get people to connect with you is what you should be doing and have a branded open house bag with your uh, social channels on that as well too. So even if you're uh, out shopping, uh, that's an opportunity for any opportunity. I'm telling you, this is, this is something that is, you know, again, if you're thinking, oh, I would never do that. This isn't something I would do. Shut that off because that is not a growth mindset, right? That's a lack mindset. So you wanna be working for ways to identify within your own self too about your own thinking as I'm suggesting some of these strategies to you. Again, I know they're not for everybody, but I would say if more of these are not for you than not, that's something to look within too. So these are strategies that are working for people who are killing it in the business is what I'm saying. All right. And then um, got to get a link tree at this point. Every single agent that is posting on social media, I include in the call to action section of your captions, which you receive every Monday, enough for the whole week, a link tree uh, option to add your link tree. So this is a must. It is a free website and it allows you to connect links from your website 
your YouTube, your reviews, your videos, landing pages to request um, uh, guides, you know, connect with me uh, options, reviews, everything. I mean, it's just everything. It's it's limitless. You can even upgrade it to a, um, a premium account and you can accept payments too. I mean, if you're doing, if you're uh, sell, selling something outside of, you know, your standard real estate business, I'm just saying Linktree has, is an amazing tool. And I think every person should have a Linktree. Again, this is what makes it easy for people to find out more information about you and ultimately connect with you. And then some things to consider. Um, and this actually, this quote um, I find pretty impactful is a job is doing what we're told, right? So if we've come from an industry where we were employed before getting into real estate, we sort of define our business model around what we believe it will take to succeed. But we're in an industry, we're in a market right now, I should say, where we are being stretched beyond, right? We have to be thinking of new and creative ways to do what others are not doing in order to succeed. So in order to do that, you have to shift into the mindset of a career is doing whatever it takes, right? So we've got to be that growth minded. You've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's what I say. If you've not been doing video or, you, or you've been very inconsistent in doing video on social media, stretch yourself. All right, let's get into how to get more agent referrals because agent referrals is a way of business, right? I mean, if you if you look back uh, for agents who have been doing business for um, years, I mean, over the years, how many agent referrals have you worked? I, I'm I'm quite certain there's many. So, agent referrals are a byproduct of a relationship, whether it's short relationship or a long relationship, but it's always built on trust, right? And if you don't know these agents because they're out of state and they're referring business to you chances are they're gonna start looking for you online. And where are most agents hanging out when they're not on the road with clients or in the office or with family and friends? Where are they? They're on social media, right? So, all right. Um, so remember that real estate is a relationship business. It's all about building relationships with homeowners, sellers, home buyers, investors, builders, affiliates, Affiliates will refer business to us as well. Local business owners, organizations. But I think some of the um, agents don't give the agent relationships enough credit because they might see these agents as their competition. But a mindset shift would serve us right there because really what agents are is a source of business as well. So ask yourself, and this is, again, what I talked about earlier in the class is who's most likely commenting and following you on social and that uh, most of us would say agents and other people in the industry. Um, so a, a tip here to build the agent trust is number one, post consistently. It shows that you are behind the scenes that you have it together. So even when you're busy, you are consistently posting. And you're posting valuable content. And by doing that, you set the example, right, of being that knowledge broker. So if, if agents are seeking to make an agent referral and they start looking around on Instagram for agents in such and such an area, and they see content where agents are rolling their eyes and complaining about waiting uh, to show a house because the previous buyers were in there too long or, you know, whatever. You want to be as upbeat and positive as possible, right? Remember, everybody's watching. And then second um, way to get agent referrals, don't disregard groups, right? A lot of us may, may be even members of some of the, these groups, but because we're really not active in any of them, we're not really seeing any of the stuff that's being posted or shared. So, um, but if you're not active in these groups, seek out agent referral groups. They do exist on Facebook. Uh, and then professional networking groups as well. There are people in these professional networking groups are constantly seeking referrals. 
So even if they're not seeking an agent referral, it's a way for you to tag an affiliate who you might recommend to this person and deepen that connection. So everything's an opportunity and nothing isn't. And then agent training growth groups. These are, there's a lots of mastermind groups, um, Brian Buffini group, Tom Ferry group. There's a lot of them. And yes, you may have to be part of that, those programs um, to get into the groups, but I'm saying look for the training group growth groups that you um, can actually join and, and do that. And then once you're in these groups, seek to engage and involve yourself um, at an intentional level to build relationships. A lot of these groups could be local um, groups, local residence groups. This is huge. Um, you know, where you, you know, maybe are aware of another agent who's part of that group who is downsizing their business can recommend this, you know, a group to you that they were part of that helped them. So seek that out too, where um, an agent might be, you know, retiring or winding down their business uh, and you might offer a standard, you know, referral fee to that agent and work out an agreement with them. One of the first agent referrals that I got actually was um, from another agent who was working in the office with me the same day. And a couple had come into the front, walked in and wanted to speak to an agent about um, listing their home. And she actually referred it to me because she was winding down her business. Why, why she was working out of the office, I don't know, but it, it, it all worked for me. Point being is don't make any assumptions. And then another um, tip is to attend agent and board events. These events are a huge opportunity to connect with like-minded uh, people who are invested in growing their business, right? So um, people who will pay to attend an event to learn are investing in their business. This is huge. Um, and then, you know, when you attend these events, go prepared to connect. So bring plenty of business cards, wear your name badge, uh, and even create a QR code sticker to put on a folder on the back of your phone, et cetera, that makes it easy for agents to uh, scan and connect with you. Also, attend broker events. Um, this is a way to build relationships with your fellow Lair agents, uh, if you're with Lair. And again, if referrals are built on trust, and trust is the foundation of every great relationship, you must intentionally build, you must intentionally commit to building connections that lead to relationships. So um, you can do this easily at Lair. Lair is, we're a celebratory company, right? So we're, there's grand openings happening, uh, lots of trainings, as well as monthly birthday luncheons that give you an opportunity to connect with your fellow lions. Uh, and again, don't make any assumptions that you know, if they're in the office, that means they, it doesn't mean anything. That means that they're in the office. It doesn't, you know, referrals are in, and, and don't think just off, you know, don't just think about referrals with agents, but also think about other opportunities to host open houses, right? Um, you know, to coverage, if you're a newer agent and you want to shadow in, uh, in an inspection, spend time in the office, spend time around people. I think people, are, agents are more apt to provide opportunities to agents they know and trust than they are to someone sending a random email saying they're available to help. So get in front of the agents that are attending these events. Here's another one, a mastermind group, um, a phenomenal way to connect with like-minded agents, again, who are working to build and maintain a thriving business. Uh, don't assume there's no place for you at these groups though, again, um, these groups could be hosted by someone who, you know, loves educating and collaborating with agents, uh, but maybe is sort of on the DL with their own business development per se, where they, but they could provide you with an opportunity in other ways. So definitely uh, mastermind groups, I would say, be all over those because in, in bottom line, though, they're a place to learn epic information, right? So 
Um, and it's a great way to ask questions too. I mean, you're part of a, 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 a just a small group or even a large group of people. Um, and so somebody else asking a question, maybe you wouldn't have even thought of can provide you with answers that, you know, you walk away learning a lot of information is what I'm saying, but usually by these groups. Here's another way um, is network email marketing. So this is a cool tip. Um, create an insider email campaign that targets agents. And the intent of this content should be to add value, showcase your knowledge, and stay, stop, stay top of mind, again, for all kinds of opportunities, right? Not just um, referrals, but yes, they're on this list. But also, again, training opportunities, open house, uh, event networking, as well as coverage opportunities, because every opportunity to get in front of someone or contribute is an opportunity to ultimately grow your business. And then create events, uh, host your own mastermind. If, um, if that's something you have interest in, you can host your own networking group as well. Um, and, you know, when you're doing that, ask other agents who they recommend, you know, for plumbers, who they recommend for uh, electricians or carpenters or et cetera. So um, you can involve other agents in the building of your, of your groups as well too. And then ask an agent or excuse me, create an agent interview series. This is uh, per perhaps something you do with out of state agents that again, builds the connection um, where you co-talk about different strategies that are successful. So you both share the spotlight. It's not you know, it's not necessarily that you're giving the spotlight over, that you're more sharing strategies, the success strategies. Uh, another tip could be to host a book club and invite other agents. Agents love um, being social. I think most agents do like being social. So this would be a good opportunity uh, to have that, um, to do that. And then here's another thing is to host a co-broke appreciation event, um, you know, do that, you know, maybe at the end of the year, thanking people for being great partners and success. So it's really endless. A lot of the suggestions, um, a lot of the different ways that you can connect with agents. It's amazing. And here's something, and this is again, so this strategy really means incorporating referrals as part of your business plan, right? So if you're, if you've got a referral sec section, I call them buckets, um, of your business plan, then you're going to really get into, okay, just like you would build your own business, part of building your own business is to get referrals, right? Because we know that's an important part of client trust. Well, let's take that same strategy and incorporate it into our referral business. And so we're going to ask for referral testimonials, and that means in all aspects of it. So we're going to ask the agent's um, to recommend you as their go-to agent in whatever area, right? Obviously, Massachusetts or New Hampshire or Florida, if you're with Lair. And then ask the person who referred you business for recommendations. So what does that look like? So Joe Smith from ABC Realty referred a buyer that you just closed. Joe Smith could just say, what a pleasure it was working with Renee at Lair Realty. She kept me abreast of everything. And I knew my client was in the best of hands and ultimately she got him the deal, whatever, you know, I'm just saying that's another referral recommendation that you can ask for, receive and share. And then ask clients who referred, you, who you referred to another agent for recommendation. So say you weren't able to service um, a buyer in Vermont. So you referred um, your client Joe to XYZ Realty in Vermont. They did a great job, but now you're going back to the client and just, again, get that referral and just say, you know, um, I felt comfortable reaching out to Renee, uh, who put me in touch with another agent. It was great experience. She put me in, you know, great. She, she put, she did research and aligned me with an agent. Um, I would always reach out to her or whatever. So again, another, another testimonial you can share on various uh, platforms. And then treat, again, this is what I said earlier, is treat your referral business as an entire bucket or component of new business development, right? Um, keep an eye out for 
top referral locations and work in, to build relationships with agents in those areas. So for instance, if you're seeing somebody refer or close business in, um, in out of state areas, like if they're duly licensed in another state, watch to see what, where other states are that have businesses being closed um, and keep out and, and watch that. And, and they said, as I said, build relationships, go after that business and then share the social proof. Here's another thing. Add a section. This is a cool pro tip. Add a section on your layer website or whoever you're with a sub menu. Our, our layer website allows us to customize that. So I would add a section on the layer website. If you're serious about building your referral business, which is very viable form of business, add a sub menu, uh, create a sub menu or a menu on your layer website, and then share success stories, right? Get some video content on there, um, share your testimonials on there. Um, and then also create a link through your link tree for referrals as well, making it people, making it easy for people to connect and make referrals to you. You can add landing pages through those links, which you can do through your Lair website, by the way. All right. All right. Another one is um, don't make any assumptions. I said this earlier, a vast majority of sales are found through repeat business and or referrals. So Repeat business, we know, right? There are many people building their entire business model by way of repeat business and referral. But again, now that we're shifted and, and the market has substantially changed, we've got to look for new ways to deepen that. So if you have a repeat business and referral model already as part of your business, deepen that referral by making agent relation, building agent relationships and getting that all over your website, creating it as an actual part of what you do for business. Because I often believe too, everything happens at the moment of decision, right? So if you start to create it, it will happen, right? You just got to, you've got to implement ways to create the strategy and put it out there as part of a normal part of your business. Um, and again, as I said, don't assume any agent won't refer business to you just because they're local. There are many reasons why agents refer business. They might have too much going on right now. They may be downsizing. They might be getting ready to relocate. Life changes. So make no assumptions. Okay, um, a pro tip is to add CTAs to your social media posts and videos. So showcase um, your success, both incoming referral and outgoing referral on social media. Uh, create social posts showing your accepted offer for these uh, referrals. So even if you referred um, a, a deal out in say South Carolina and the agent has let you know or your client or your referral client has let you know that uh, an offer was accepted, perfect, get that out on social media, right? Always be showcasing everything you're doing as a sign of success, um, especially the closing and, and review. Uh, and don't forget to add call to actions on your referral post. So if you are thinking of making a move uh, to an area that I don't directly cover, reach out to me because I will do the research to put you in the very best of hands. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, time for a little reality check. So I would ask you to really get real with yourself here because we've I've, I've given you a lot of great tips and tools. Get real with yourself though here. I mean, are you for real taking advantage of all the opportunities out there to meet and connect with prospective clients on social media? Because again, if we treat social media like a telephone instead of a television, I think a lot of us would have different, different results. So. Always be seeking to connect and to provide value. All right, so keep in mind, there are two aspects to success on social. One is valuable content, and the second is strong engagement. So you're already getting valuable content. If you're a layer agent, you're receiving um, five standard social media posts with suggested captions, hashtags, call to actions, emojis. <laughs> it's when you get that by email, and by text, and there's also a dashboard for you to um, uh, obtain other social content as well there. So really what we are, what we wanna do is help you develop your strong engagement skills. And that's um, 
what we're talking about here. And so how and where can you engage with people on social media? We all know you can do that by commenting, uh, by direct messaging, and by reacting to posts. This is typically how you can engage with people. Uh, where you can engage with people is the uh, personal page, a person's professional page, as well as uh, in groups and through a created event, as well as on the standard feed, reels, stories, threads, and marketplace. Those are pretty much, that's it on social media. So a pro tip, if they don't react, so your audience, your, your connections don't react and comment on your post, work to build a relationship, right? Not everybody will treat social media the same way you do. We have to remember there's a person behind that profile and that person may be shy or that person just may be really busy and not on social a lot. Right. So don't have expectations of other people per se, but work to build standards for your own behavior to succeed on social media. So let's talk about how to engage with anyone. So the first tip here is to remember to use people's names and social media makes this super easy. If you're responding to a comment, they automatically get tagged but people love hearing their names. So make an effort to use uh, their names in comments, even if they're tagged, right? Still say their name in the comments or messages. It's more heartfelt and authentic. And then you can also tag them in heartfelt posts if appropriate and make direct comments mentioning them. Um, you know, if you see something uh, that's appropriate and remind you of them, perhaps a, another way to deepen the, the relationship. Um, but add these people, add your connections to your CRM. I think that is a huge gap that a lot of agents don't take advantage of because we believe that the connections are, you know, the people that we meet at the open house, the, the past clients, the sphere of influence, the um, affiliates. We have an entire connections list, right, on our social media connections, right? So, um, even if you don't have their email address or ask them for it, but even if you don't, you can still add them in some basic notes um, and follow up, reminders to follow up, especially if you have their birthday, anniversary of some sort as well, or some life-changing event, add that. And that is a way to help you really build a, an epic uh, database. And then intentionally show interest in people. Um, again, equate this to a room. I always say equate your social media connections as a room full of people. You wouldn't just walk into the room and stand against the wall or smile and stand against the wall. You would interact, right? You'd, you'd carry on conversations again. Um, so uh, people are more likely to open up with you if they feel like you're genuinely interested in them. Like, I feel like I have actually formed pretty cool friendships on social media. And many of these people I've never met or talked to in person or even on the phone, right? So I have bonds with some people like that are like that. And, and as a result, I have closed real estate business because it was built on a actual genuine connection that I built. So ask questions and show enthusiasms, uh, enthusiasm for their responses. So again, I guess treat people how you would want to be treated, right? Like again, I, I always will equate it to a room full of people. And I think visually, if you can, you can uh, transition to that way of thinking too, you might feel that you start interacting more socially on social media, right? So something to think about. And then watch your social tone. Um, your tone on social media can convey a lot about your character intentions to others. And, and I say this because it may be fully innocent, um, but remember your interactions and comments are seen by others, not just people who are part of that comment chain. So um, again, you're commenting and reacting to somebody who said something that you're, you know, LOLing about and uh, but always watch the tone because somebody else may be part, may be watching that whole conversation unfold. Um, and you have to remember, um, you know, 
your interactions on social media on your page are typically, unless you've got a privacy setting for preventing it, are seen by every one of your connections. In addition, even if you've made a post private, anybody that's part of that post, I'll just say, that does a screenshot, it is no longer private. I'm just saying. So please watch what you put on social. Is, is be, be mindful of your social tone. All right. And then finding common ground with people is don't make it all about real estate. Um, I think this is a very common thing that I see. I'll go on agents pages and all I see is under agreement, closed, offer accepted, new listing. And that's all great. I mean, it shows they're busy and they're doing it, which is great. But, but finding common ground with people and build that will help you build more authentic connections. And this is part of the, um, the tip that I gave earlier um, was in building a, a, a bio is to talk about yourself in one of those lines. So if you go to my Instagram page, which is at the real Renee Tompkins, no H in Tompkins, um, I think I, I've been pretty much uh, incorporated all the aspects of a, of, a, of a great bio. And one of those lines is not about real estate is what I'm saying. So make it, make yourself authentic. I'm a person outside of real estate. I love tea, books, and wellness. That's me, right? So talk about whatever you love, tacos, pizza, uh, you know, doggies, kitty cats, whatever. My kids, you know, all, all of it. Um, it helps you build rapport and make interactions more enjoyable with your, with your contacts. And then always be authentic, yet upbeat. Nobody likes, um, you know, if you've, if you, if you are, um, you're sick, certainly, you know, share that. I mean, it, it's happening in your life, but don't get on a tangent of complaining um, about life or about a specific thing because it brings people down. So try to, I mean, I, I, I understand things happen. I mean, I've shared things that have happened in my own life on social because um, they were legit happening. My, my dad passed. It was heartbreaking for me. I posted about it. Um, I shared it and allowed other people to grieve along with me, but I, you know, I, I felt like the next thing was to thank them and, you know, just keep things as positive as possible. So, um, people are naturally drawn to others who are authentically, um, positive is what I'm saying and always maintain an upbeat attitude, even when, um, you know, again, this goes back to, you never know who's watching. I had a post once and people were ripping up about the paint color and they were, it was, it turned into this tangent of sort of negativity. Right. And I just responded and I said, honestly, I love all colors and, you know, to each his own, right. That's, that, that's what makes painting for uh, uh, shopping for paint. So exciting. You get to make choices. And my response got liked by four of my one, one current client and three previous clients. So I'm just saying, and they weren't, they hadn't even commented on this post. So what I'm saying is everybody's watching and try to keep it as upbeat as possible. Um, and it also helps you have a more enjoyable experience on social media too. There is a lot of negativity out there on social, which, you know what, I'm going to bring something up really quickly here. It's not part of my slide. But if you have uh, things that uh, pages that you're following that tend to trigger you, unfollow them or at least silence them for 30 days, um, you can certainly manage your feed and, and have an amazing experience on social media yourself by doing that. And that, again, this goes back to energy is contagious, especially on social media. I always believe that. <laughs> All right, let's get into some top Instagram hacks for success. Number one, you can actually um, move. So when you're adding music to your Instagram stories, you can move the music Ouija or widget there off the screen so it doesn't just distract from your video. You can do that. Number two is you can create a close friends list that allows you to customize the content you're sharing on your, uh, your story feed, which is cool. 
Here's a really cool tip. I know you're going to thank me for this is get rid of most of those spam comments. How uh, <laughs> we're so excited to see we have engagement on our Instagram post only to see it's spammy. Uh, so you can get rid of those by going to uh, your if you're on your main screen on your phone, you can go to settings, uh, select hidden words, and then you can enter the words promote on and send pick to if those are the spammy comments that you're getting or you can do nothing and just leave them as is. But uh, if you don't wanna be bothered with them anymore, that's how you do it. And then you can also add a location to your Instagram story without using the location sticker, which if some of you aren't using that because you don't want it, you, you think the sticker detract, detracts from the actual post itself, all you need to do is tap on the screen once when your photo is uploaded to add the location. Uh, so you don't have to add it. Uh, by using a sticker. And then here's a content suggestion is, uh, or to, um, an idea is to use the question button to increase uh, engagement and, and keep your question short and to the point. And as I always say, don't make it always about real estate. So um, in fact, I'm going to post this tonight. Um, I'm going to do that because I am currently reading Cutting for Stone um, by Abraham Verghese, phenomenal and another way to increase engagement and is ask somebody what they're reading. So, and then another Instagram hack is to, um, well, for your reference, I, some of you have mentioned um, a change, you're noticing a change in the Instagram feed. I know I did. And it's because they're being managed by um, AI now, like everything. <laughs> So you can change the feed um, from suggested posts um, to people you're following by being on the main feed uh, and you're seeing the Instagram, the word Instagram on the top left-hand corner. You can then, there's a drop down which allows you uh, to select following or favorites to change the feed. The only downside is you have to do this each time. So it just takes a second, um, but it's, it's cool that you can at least change that around. And then to add anyone to your favorites list, go to their Instagram profile, uh, or you can do it right off the feed. Uh, but there's three dots next to that person, whether you're on their profile or on the feed next to the post they just made with an option to add to favorites. And you can add up to 50 favorites. So they can be business pages or personal pages. But I would invite you or encourage you to think strategically about this and add the people you really want to uh, cultivate relationships with, not the people you already have relationships with. So if you're BFFs or you're connected with them, you love them, they love you, and you know it, and that's fine. But maybe using those 50 favorites options to people, as I said, being more strategic and adding people you legitimately want to build relationships with. So, And you can ultimately unfavor somebody to add somebody else. But right now, the limit is 50. So here's a pro tip, and this is to visualize everyone carrying a sign that says, make me feel important, right? How much differently would you treat somebody? Um, I, 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 I love this one. And then focus your energy on being interested, not interesting. I have an idea for next. This just gave me an idea for next month's uh, or November's social media masterclass. Um, there's a woman who wrote a phenomenal book on this um, as a way to network. And I um, hope to invite her on for that, but a great strategy. And the more you, you start implementing this strategy, it just becomes natural to you where you just get into asking questions about people, you know, asking them questions. Tell me more about that. How did that make you feel? What was that experience like for you? Make it more about them than about you. It's I love that. So let's talk about some Instagram story suggestions to maximize engagement. Number one, and this is so easy because there's so many of them out there. And if you need any, certainly uh, friend me on social media because I usually post at least one a day. Um, and that's an inspirational quote. I mean, I radiate towards positivity and inspiration and I believe like-minded people do. So share that stuff um, as, you, as, as, as much as you can. I think people love it. Another one that I personally love, so I've incorporated it a few times on, on today's class, is what are you reading? Um, or what I'm reading, what about you? So again, this is an engagement uh, strategic post to get people um, to share. 
showcase one of your favorite places to get a great meal. Um, who doesn't want a great re uh, restaurant recommendation? Over the years, although we don't really go out to eat anymore um, that much, but over the past years, I've shared many restaurants, uh, checked into them, and also at, after even recommended and wrote reviews on their Facebook pages if I really enjoyed my experience there. Um, so certainly, and, and I've, I've had people comment, you know, I'll definitely check it out. And then a month later, they're at the restaurant. Thanks to Renee for this recommendation. So uh, it's cool because again, you're helping the business, you're connecting with people and you're not talking necessarily about real estate. So it's all good. And another um, uh, here tip is uh, to ask me anything about say Tewksbury real estate. And then uh, some example um, questions or engagement posts that you can do are yay or nay posts. What are your thoughts on this? And I actually do this on my standard feed again with that green, I think it was green cabinets. Um, and again, always looking for a post that will like initiate a lot of, of comments uh, or this or that posts. Um, but again, don't even, I, I wouldn't even do that real estate related. I wouldn't do like, um, you know, dark cabinets, white cabinets, et cetera. That's all standard content stuff. Think about different unique posts that you can do. I did a post once, it was a this or that post, and it was, how do you unwind after a busy day? Hot tub or fire pit? And I got a lot of hits on that. So again, um, I love that one. And then got questions about the market. I'm here as a resource. I'm here to help. And then thinking of making some updates before selling or wondering if now is a good time to buy a house. So these are um, some good content suggestions. And then use polls to increase engagement. And um, you can create a poll about your local real estate market. Um, some poll suggestions here are what's the average home price um, or selling price right now in, so you know the answer, but you're, you're getting again, and this is for engagement. Because again, think strategically. You're talking about engagement to build your business. Engagement is where it's at for social media success. Which room renovations add the most value? Kitchen or finished basement? Whoa, that's a good one. That is a good one. Um, and then does staging a home increase the offer price received? We know the answer to that. But again, this is a strategic engagement post. So... There you go. Think strategically and see the big picture. Always be thinking, who can I connect with today and how can I add value? I would challenge you to put that on a sticky and put that right in front of you so you see it all, all, the, all, all week, all, all year, wherever. All right. I have, are we doing, oh, I'm a little over time as usual. I'm chatty Kathy again. Let's get into some kudos. These are agents who I have noticed on social media who are putting out video content, whether it's just a one off or consistently, uh, I'm seeing them on social media and they're doing great. So we've got, and I'm, forgive me if I say anybody's name wrong, we've got Diana Paquette, Brian Pereira, Lily Dumont, Cara Labonte, Dan Capra, Jessica Preventure, Brianna La Couture, Sarah Lyman, Kimberly Couplest, Bridget Diorio, Sarah Lewis, Jason Howd, Jay McHugh, Johnny Fallon and Sharon Narbonne have all that I can see have put out video content um, recently within the last month. So congratulations to all of you for doing a great job on getting yourself out there on social media. And if you are active on social media, I would love to connect with you. My channel is at the real Renee Tompkins. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, and Pinterest. So I'd love to connect with you. And if you follow me, I would certainly follow you right back. Mindsets for success. We're getting ready to wrap up. This is my favorite. I'll put this on every single masterclass because I live and breathe this one. It's lean in and level up. I'm going to do a whole segment, I think, on my next class about what that actually means and looks like. Excuses don't get results. There's, that is it for me. Um, another one, the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. So um, huge on that. And the distance between dreams and reality is called action. Nothing is nothing without action. You can have the best of intentions, but if you don't take any action, it's nothing. If you want to be successful, embrace and practice consistency. 
Learn to love consistency. Uh, and you only get out what you put in. And then see your comfort zone for what it is. This is so powerful. It is the enemy of growth. That's it. I love that. And everything happens at the moment of decision. That's actually an Anthony Robbins quote that I absolutely adore. Uh, my bibliophile recommendation for the month um, for this masterclass is Influence the Psychology of Persuasion. Uh, definitely recommend this book. It's a quote from it is those who don't know how to get people to say yes, soon fall away. Those who do stay and flourish. It's, the, it's getting the results that you seek. So definitely worth a read. Highly recommend. Uh, any Q&A for me right now? All right. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us for this month's masterclass. Watch for the next social media masterclass to take place in October. And uh, layer agents, I never miss an opportunity to learn and grow. Uh, sync your calendar with the layer training calendar by going to layerrealty.com forward slash training. Thank you so much for joining me for today's masterclass. Have a great month.